This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by GoToAssist. Now whose responsibility is it to secure all that that you put up on the cloud? You're putting on the cloud again? Well, yeah. I all mean, right. like a monkey fleeing and poo. Like your cat photos. But you have to encrypt that fleeing and poo. That's, that's the best kind of poo is encrypted poo. <laughs> encrypt so, all the things. So this segment is all about encryption up in the cloud. Or do you want to encrypt on your computer before Wait, sending it out? Doesn't Spider Oak already encrypt for you? Huh? Isn't that the whole point of Spider Oak? Yes. Yes, it does. I have a Don't I have we a trust password. them? Don't we trust Spider Oak? I mean, are you saying? But should you? Should That's you? That's the thing. Should you mm. actually trust whoever it is that you're you're putting all your sensitive data up with? Because it's their servers. They have access to all their encryption. So if they aren't hashing and salting everything correctly, they could gain potentially gain access to all your stuff. So what you really want to do is just trust no one. And we've all heard of TNO. Trust no one. You want to make sure that you policy. are encrypting everything before you put it up in the cloud. So you want to have that encryption key on your computer instead of their computer. I love it. All right, so how do we do this? Uh, is this just a, I mean, you're talking encryption, so obviously this is just a Linux thing. Encryption. It's going to be, it's going to be impossible to do on your Windows box. This is really going to suck for syncing across yes. platforms, right? So we found these directions over on How to Geek, and it turns out that there's a little tool called NCFS or NCFS, depending on who you are and how you want to say it, and it's just a it's just a command line uh, daemon that runs in the background of your machine every time that you log on. Just for Linux? Just for Linux. Oh, and Windows actually, and uh, Android. That's what I was getting at. And Android. See, that's what's up. Yes, I put it on my computer at home as well on my Windows machine. See, the thing and is, and that one has a GUI. If you can make it convenient, mm -hmm. then people will use security. Exactly. So let's show me how convenient this is. So first of all, of course, you just do sudo apt-get install, and it's called encfs like that. So it's already installed on my machine. It's already the newest version. Gosh, what are you doing, lady crazy person? So once you have it installed, the next thing that you want to do is actually create the new directories for it. So it's going to create an encrypted file for each file that you upload. This is different from TrueCrypt containers. So if you're familiar with a container on TrueCrypt, what you do is you create a, a whole volume mm -hmm. and you upload that to Dropbox or Spider Oak or wherever you have it. And every time you make a change in that volume, whether it's just one file or 10 files, it has to re-upload the entire thing because it's changed the entire volume. And you could imagine if it was a 100 meg uh, volume of your cat photos, yeah. you change one cat photo. Photo, it's and gonna take a lot of they're time. They're all going up, and it's going to take up a lot of your data if you have some kind of cap. And if we've learned anything from Ted Stevens, it's not a big truck. It's not something you just dump something <laughs> on. It's a series of exactly. tubes for those kittens, and they're going to take longer. They're going to take longer to get up there. Exactly. So, NCFS or NCFS does this differently. It does a separate encrypted file for each file that you want to upload to Dropbox or Spider Oak or what have you. So only re-uploads of that one file are going to change instead of having the entire container change. So to install this on your Ubuntu machine, and it is a little bit different for other versions of Linux, um, but I have Ubuntu, Ubuntu, so I'll do this one. You just put in encfs, and then do a tilde for home, put in Dropbox slash encrypted, encryptor. And you want to create another volume called private. It's going to ask you if you want to create a new directory for encrypted inside your Dropbox folder. You tell it yes. And do you want to create a new one for private? Yes, you do. Now it also says it's creating new encrypted volume. Please choose from one of the following modes. You can either do the expert mode, paranoia mode, or if you leave an empty line, it just does the standard mode. Now, I chose paranoia mode because it's already AES-256 encrypted. Uh, standard is a little bit less than that. I think it's 128 bits. But if you choose expert mode, you have the ability to change all of the different configurations. So I could do like Blowfish with AES and a bunch yeah. of other stuff. Cool. All right, <laughs> yeah, I love that. Yeah, you can do all the different ones. So just for this, I'm just going to do paranoia because it's good enough. And it tells you 256 bits appear, it's SSL AES, and it is salted. 
and it's going to ask you for some kind of password. The important thing about this is your password cannot be changed after you create it, so make sure it's something that you're going to remember. So I made mine something I won't tell you guys. It's really short, Is it, it Q-W-E-R-T-Y? <laughs> totally. Yeah, God. I knew it. There we go. Okay, so once it is done, it just goes back to my regular uh, prompt. So I'll clear this out. All right, so now that we've created that, what does that Yay! mean to me? Do I just start throwing all my stuff in my Dropbox <laughs> yeah, encrypted folder? Yeah, you just folder? throw everything into the encrypted folder and you're good to go. No. No, you do not. So after you've done all the setup and everything, it's created this encrypted folder and the private folder. Private is where you're going to put everything. That sounded really wrong. You're going to put your thing in the private <laughs> folder. You know what I'm saying? So Dropbox is going to sync the an encrypted version in the Dropbox encrypted folder of anything that you place in the private folder. So you can access the private folder on your machine, and then through Dropbox, you can get into all your encrypted documents. So basically, it's like mounting like a virtual file system over there. It's kind of yeah. like a sim link. Yes. Don't touch whatever's in the Dropbox folder, because yes, that's just exactly. a bunch of garbage. Yeah, if you put anything into the encrypted folder, if you just like copy and paste a picture or whatever, it's not going to encrypt it. Okay. So you want to put everything into the private folder, and that's all. That's also where you can get into it, anything that's decrypted gotcha. as well. And so I, I take it that I can now likewise, you know, because I use multiple Linux machines with yes. Dropbox, I could just rerun this command, enter the same password, and then it'd be able to read the files in my encrypted exactly. Dropbox folder. Exactly, yep. And another thing I did want to mention as well, you have to run the NC NCFS or NCFS command upon restart and the next time that you log in. Uh, this is because it is not actually a part of your, uh, your key ring for GNOME, but you do have the option to include that if you wanted to. Now, I didn't do that, but how do you feel about that? Well, okay, so there is a version for GNOME called GNOME-NCFS, yeah. which will add it to your GNOME key ring. So then when you log in with your regular password, that also unlocks your thing. I don't know. I like different layers of security. I could imagine, say, I don't know why you would ever leave your machine unattended and logged in, but if you did, <laughs> maybe you perhaps don't have that volume mounted. Then people can get into mounted. your encrypted files even though they don't have the password. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to say layer things, and this is this is really cool. I mean, this is yeah, you check not it out. That, oh yeah, I'm already getting my Dropbox on. Nice. I'm, I'm going to start <laughs> using this. Are you kidding? This is freaking fantastic. In fact, I used to use a much more kludgy version of this. What I would do is upload uh, GPG files, literally just used um, OpenGPG to create a encrypted version of a file with a symmetric key or something, and then upload that to Dropbox. And then mm -hmm. I'd have to download it, move it to a different directory, so yeah, that I'm not syncing the unencrypted version. Pain of the butt. And then you got to unencrypt that. It's like, yes, this is really cool. I like that it's transparent. Once you've got Me it too. set up, it's your private folder, and that's it. Yeah. Now, if you run into any difficulties when you restart your machine, just make sure to run that NCFS command again, because um, uh, one way you can tell if it hasn't been mounted again after you log in is going into your private folder and not seeing anything there. Ah, uh, you're like, oh no, my files are gone. Yeah, and they're not really. You just have to re-log into NCFS. Okay, so, cool. So very easy to use, and um, I put a file into my private folder, and there it is. So this is the... That's the garbage file. Yeah, this is the garbage file in my encrypted folder. They're trashing our rights. And trashing. then if I go back to my... If I go back home, and this is all in Nautilus. Just to show you the GUI, there's my example text file in Long Live Hack 5. Nice. So since I'm logged in, I can still get into it and I can still see what's going on. But if I was on a different computer, I could also use NCFS on that one to get access to everything. Hey, hey, hey. I'm, I just set up the command line daemon for, for Dropbox on my machine. Why don't you give me your yes. Dropbox uh, credentials and I'll be able to do it over here. Yeah, just let so, me So yeah, what's, what's your my, Dropbox password? My password? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you're so funny. I'll give her a chocolate bar. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now when we get back, uh, we're going to get into some of your feedback. And by the way, if you have feedback on this, where is it? Feedback at hack5.org. We'll be back right after this. I can tell you from experience, and you may know firsthand too, that working in IT is tough because you're responsible for all of the systems, the networks, the users, and those problems, they can happen at any moment. Don't make your job even more difficult by struggling with complicated tools. There is a better way. It's GoToAssist by Citrix. All of the support tools are rolled into one very simple integrated cloud-based solution. So here's how it works. 
With GoToAssist, you can quickly and easily log incidents and track resolutions with the service desk. You can troubleshoot problems anytime, anywhere, no matter where you are. With GoToAssist's lightning fast remote support tool, you can even do it from an iPad or an Android device. And you can also use GoToAssist monitoring to set up a proactive alerting system so that you will always be the first to know. And that's the thing that's key in IT is being the first, not when you're boss, but when you get an alert from like GoToAssist Manage to tell you, hey, there's a problem. Let's fix this before it becomes a huge issue. I highly recommend GoToAssist. It sets up in just minutes, like literally in the time that it takes you to watch this, you can be like get downloading it, getting it all set up. And it'll make your IT life so much easier. I know it did for me when I was working back east in IT. I know it definitely did when I was working out west in IT. And you can sign up for a special 30-day free trial today. Visit gotoassist.com, click on the Try It Free button, and use the promo code HAK5. Again, that's gotoassist.com, promo code HAK5.